everyone. I am Charmaine Brown, and I am blessed to be here with you to this evening, uh, 6.30 Central Daytime, 7.30 Eastern Daytime on Impact Gospel Radio. The program is Mental Health, a Holistic Impact. I'm going to tell you a little bit about um, Impact Gospel Radio. It is implemented and put into place by Dr. Clifton Rotti, who is a very helpful person in the community. He is he has seen the need for programs within uh, within the um, Jamaican diaspora and not only for Jamaicans but people around the world and so he had implemented the impact prior group in 20, 2019 there about and from that comes the impact gospel radio impact gospel stuff there's a lot of things that have impact with it and so there are a lot of programs that are in place where you if you lost your passport or anything you he he's there's resources how to get it back he has programs for impactful women impactful men conferences prior line education law and social 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 services with me the program that i do every monday at 6 30 central day times is that with me i have realized that many people are afraid to accept when they are not doing well when their relationship are going down ill when they need someone to talk to but are afraid that they might be criticized they're afraid that they might be judged um the trust that they place in others are not that strong and so they will not come to certain and certain people to tell their business because it's their business it's not our business it's their business so they don't want to come to these people to tell these people their problem because they they are ashamed and not that they're ashamed they feel they feel guilty or they feel embarrassed that they are going through such a position in life um that people might look at them oh i didn't expect this person to go through listen people i need you like me charmaine grace brown need you to stop judging people stop judging them like Pick the beam out of your eyes before you pick it out of other people's eyes, man. Let me just say that. When people come to you with something, you know what? I always tell my friends, everybody have a better friend. And I believe that everybody had a better, how? Everyone has a better friend. Where if I tell my best friend something, that best friend have somebody else who he or she consider better than I as within a friendship. And that person telling that person, that other person gonna tell somebody else that believe that that friend is better than the one that tell them. And by the time you finish telling somebody something within a week, everybody know your business. We don't need to stop these things. We don't need to have, to have some integrity and, have, and, and practice confidentiality and privacy come on seriously somebody tell you something in confidence keep it confidential and so i realized that when people are going through a hard time stressful time they don't they they deal with it on their own and they're not dealing with it effectively they are not looking at a supportive system that can help them with it because of fear shame guilt whatever it is they don't realize that they can seek professional help like myself who's a psychotherapist no and so they start to hurt themselves with their feeling they feel bad about themselves with their behavior they act bad about themselves when you're not eating properly because you're stressful that's a, a, a bad act to yourself because your body needs the, that nutrients to build your immune system as well as other system in your body to keep you healthy they don't 
feel good about themselves they feel like they are nothing so as a licensed certified psychotherapist i am here with research based information with my stories and and the stories that i'm telling you they are truthful i tell like i tell people that i don't keep secret of my life because secret hurt and so if you think you're gonna hear something about me and take it destroy me you can't because i tell you before you can destroy me with my secret i tell you my secret so there's nothing left for you to take and tell me for me to feel shame and 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 disgrace no one can disgrace me and shame me and the books are coming out they, I, they are being written everything is there everything from i was from i can remember my my life that my life story they will be there for you to see and read i am here to help you navigate give you information tell story my experiences and i put a story line in place the raymond family saga where we go through where this family it's a family unit each of them go through their own problems just like you and i and we pick and take away and take out and build our tools build strategies how to take care of ourselves so we can become functional people in society if your mind is not well your physical being not gonna be well your emotional being not gonna be well your financial financial situation not gonna be well it's a holistic thing so i provide you a holistic care our website is there www.mentalhealthhorizon.com and you can give send us email at info at mentalhealthhorizon.com we are on facebook we're on twitter we're on instagram we are on youtube we're on many other platforms so here we go that's what we do here that's my program last week we were talking about karen we start the karen dilemma who is karen and we i'm just recapping karen is from is 36 years old from kingston jamaica she's very brilliant she's a very brilliant girl a young lady and she came to the states on a program academical program and so we didn't get far into her life but what i'm saying um she had she was having some trouble some distraction she she go into these activities to distract her from what was happening at home and i also was saying last week that or the week before that we as caregivers for our children and other people children because you know some mothers only love their children and don't like other people children and I want to get into that depth because if i don't like other people children you're doing something that is bad very bad you have to love everyone uh, we are going to take a break because i see my producer is doing okay we're going to take a break and we will come right back into the current family saga
everyone, I am Charmaine, and I am blessed to be here with you tonight on Impact Gospel Radio, Mental Health, a holistic impact where we talk about mental health issues. We give evidence-based information. We throw questions. We talk about life stories, experiences, and the Raymond family saga. And we're on the Karen, who's Karen, the current dilemma season two episode one um i was saying before we took a break that there are people who just love their own children that that's not gonna work yeah love your kids love them i want you to love them but it, it defeat the purpose when you only love your own children because for instance you go on the road and you see another child crying where no one is around are you not going to help that child as a mother would you be so would you not help that child the question is would you not help that child and if you would not help that child that's not good because think about it your child could be in a position that need help from somebody else and if that person act the way you act then your child would be in trouble okay um, I am saying to you that you need to listen to your kids and listen to them really, really well because, and look at their action. Look at their action. I ha I know someone before, um, I know them when they were young because I'm not, I'm not young. I am, I am young, but I have age. I have age behind my looks. Okay. I just look beautiful and young because I underdeveloped. Am I underdeveloped? Um, I am a slow, I was slow in developmental, in my developmental stage or ages. And so I, and I eat well, I sleep well, I take care of myself to the best of my ability. And so I look like this. There's no nothing added. Well, I have foundation on and I have, um, what is this contour? I have blush, I have blush. I put my eyebrow, I have no eyebrow, no, no eyebrow. I just paint them on. There's no lashes I have on now. That's just my lashes. I just couldn't bother to put them on. And I have locks. I lock my hair and so gives me that body that I have. What I am saying is that I have age that I can tell you that I have known people when they were young, children, and I have seen changes in them. And I can remember once a young lady came to me and said, I don't want to go home. I want to stay. And I said, but why would you want to stay? Like, I, I can't keep you. And she said, I want to stay because I am being abused. And I'm saying, what do you mean you're being abused? And the young lady said, I am being abused and I don't want to go home. And I, I dealt further to get the understanding. And she was not wrong. She was right. The honest was on me to protect that person which i did and i think i did diligently because i get i i did and i'm proud of myself that i listen and believe you me i didn't even do psychotherapy i didn't i wasn't even in school for that i was just going into school for nursing at the time like it was what i know now i didn't even know it then i only knew then that i must protect this person at all cost and i did that well and if it's what if it were any other person i would have done the same thing because abuse is not nice when people are hurt it's not nice it it is just not nice so what i'm saying to you if you are some parent that don't care about other person you need to stop it get back together get yourself together build integrity build your kindness and your and extend that kindness to other people that's what I'm saying right now. So I'm going to go to the Karen story and catch up back. So Karen was brilliant and she was distracted and she does, um, she did activities, extra curriculum activities to get her into that mental stage where she could feel safe. Karen dreams and fantasize about a better life somewhere in another part of the world. Can you believe, can you understand when people are troubled? And remember that I'm telling you, at that time, Karen was a teenager. Karen was in high school. So she was young and she need protection. 
she needed protection at that time. Can you imagine when you are dreaming of living in another part of the world? Can you imagine when you are fantasizing of living in another part of the world in your young stage because you, 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 you feel unsafe? That's not a good feeling for, for teenagers or young, young female to be in, right? Karen is brilliant in spelling and won the competition of the year. The first prize of winning the, com the, the, the championship was to compete in the U.S. games. So here, Karen looks like she's going to get a break. Let us see. So she was going to compete in the U.S. games. She went to New York. She did went to New York. Imagine that. U.S. when she was 16 and the champion and the championship program, which was held in Manhattan. So here, Karen was in Manhattan at 16 years old because she won the championship. And here she's competing against regional and against an international level. She's brilliant. She's skillful. She's a good, she, she seems to have her head on her body, which can come from a trauma point of view. I'm going to talk about that a little bit before I go and break. So sometimes when we are experiencing trauma, it can be trauma of any kind. It can be trauma from an abusive situation. It can be trauma from a family situation. It can be trauma from an accident. It can be trauma from the death of a person, God forbid. It can be trauma from, from anything. Sometimes when we're experiencing trauma, some of us try to distract ourselves with other activities without go fixing the traumatic event. It can work for a period of time because the more we're busy, and, and there was a traumatic, traumatic, event in my life in 2004 in 2004 i experienced trauma and doing while i was experiencing that traumatic event i was working at a call center in montego bay um new um what that place name in montego bay um freeport oh my god i couldn't remember the name people <laughs> In Freeport, Montego Bay, I was working at a collection agent. And, and I'm, I'm telling you, when I went to get the job, the lady said to me, they're not going to hire me because I am overqualified. And I've never worked in my life, and I wanted to work. <laughs> my mother would not allow me to work because she see me as a sickling. She see me as a sick person. She see me as a person who needed to be protected. She saw me as somebody who she need to take care of, who needed to have stress. I'm going to tell you more about the story when I come back. We are going to take a break and we will be right back and I will delve into my, my story with you.
Welcome back, everyone. I am Charmaine Brown, and I'm blessed to be here with you on Impact Gospel Radio. The program is Mental Health, a Holistic Impact, where we try to, where I try to, me and the Impact Gospel Radio team, try to provide you with information and, and just information, tools and strategies, how to assist you in balancing your life where your mental health is intact and your life is intact because there are some persons who believe that if they are having mental health issues it doesn't affect the other part of their life and that i can tell you my friends and all those persons who are listening that it doesn't go like that because we're a holistic being and what affect one era of our lives does affect the other areas of our lives and so we need to get our lives together um in the sense of whatever works let it work whatever we have to put in place let it put in place if we have to seek help some of us are afraid to go get the help we need because they're thinking people are going to call us cuckoo or we are mad or whatever it is. Let them call us that. The, the honesties are on us for us to get the help. We need the help. Go get it. Get it from people who are professional, like myself, a psychotherapist, licensed, certified psychotherapist. Yeah, I was telling you before I went on break that I had sustained trauma in 2004, I believe, where I was looking job. I have never worked before. I had a business before, but I've never worked in the work life, work world. And I, I wanted work. I had a lot of subjects at the time and I was very bright. I'm still bright. <laughs> and so when I went, I, I, I couldn't get any job in Montego Bay there. I just couldn't. And so I went into a supermarket and I showed them my credential. They said they're not hiring me because I'm overqualified. They don't know why I want to become a cashier. I wanted to cash. What's so hard in believing that I really wanted to learn? I really wanted to know to cashier, <laughs> how to become a cashier. I was report and I looked up in the collection agency and they said, the lady looked at me and said, I'm not hiring you because you're not going to stay here with us. You're overqualified. And I said, what is it that you, you can't understand that I really want to work here? Like people, I really wanted a job. I've never worked in my life before. And I wanted to see what that nine to five was. I wanted to see. I wanted to see a paycheck. Well, I had a business before and I was getting money from it. But I want to see the other side of this working world. And I said to the lady, hire me. I really want the job. I will stay at the time I was going to stay. And so she hired me. The, she gave me the job and I realized I was terrible at the job. Believe you me, I knew they were going to fire me because I didn't know how to collect money from people. I really didn't know what I was doing. They, they give you this script that you read and that you have to know when you call somebody and tell them that they owe money and they need to pay it. And I was terrible at the script. I didn't know how to get those money. And so I knew I wasn't doing a good job. And in my mind, I knew that if I'm not doing a good job, I wouldn't hire me if I'm not doing a good job. So why should somebody else hire me if I'm not doing a good job? And so I knew that they were going to get rid of me. I was upset with the people who I was collecting money from. And so because when I call them and tell them that they owe and they need to pay, they would curse me out and tell me why, you know, you don't go pay it. Don't call me. Don't. And a and, and lot of slang in it, rude. I can't say it here. And I, I, was, I was getting frustrated because I wasn't doing anything. I wasn't collecting any money. I've never collected any money in that company. And I felt like I wasn't working, even though they were paying me. And I got sick. I had to be admitted. And while I was admitted, they fired me from the job. <laughs> yes. While I was in the hospital, they fired me. They fired me and they didn't know why I didn't come to do, come to work. I didn't have a chance to call them. It was emergency. And um, I, I was traumatized. It was, it was an illness that, that 
um, causes some trauma and, and me in my mental, in my mentality. And so when they fire me, a friend of mine, a good friend of mine, um, who was a human resource manager as well for sandals at the time, call this manager and said why would you fire her she's actually in the hospital sick you had no reason to fire her while she was sick and they were going to hire me back and i and i just said you know what i'm not doing a good job at this place and with me and integrity if i'm not doing a good job i'm just not doing a good job i just need to go somewhere else and this was when i said to myself i am going to go into school because i keep putting off that four years study you know, every, every people people want to go into college and university to study, and it's four years. And as a young girl looking at four years, it seems so so long. But this was a time when I said I am going to go to college, and I'm going to spend that four years in college where no one else will ever fire me in my life. And so I did not deal with that trauma that I sustained. I went into right after, maybe three months after, not dealing with the trauma. I went straight into college and I buried myself for four years. And when I mean buried myself, people, I mean, I studied to the point where my brother Mark would look at me in the morning and said, are you not gonna sleep? Are you not gonna eat? Are you crazy? The program that I was in was nursing and it was very hard. <laughs> I didn't expect it to be so hard because i was doing a bachelor of science in nursing some of these courses i've never heard of before in my life some of these things i've never seen them in all my life and there are some courses that they are only offered every year and so if you fail this year you have to wait until next year before you can get into that program again because you can't pass through this program without doing these courses and so i decided that i am not failing not one of my courses not one will i fail and so i studied so much that in the middle of my head right here see here in the middle of my head it was ball spot right here was a big bald spot with little fine gray hair right here and my hair was was like this short short and dry and it couldn't grow my hair would not grow i i was not doing well i wasn't eating i wasn't sleeping i was i was what they call it school stress that's that's the way i put it school stress i was stressed because of school and i decided that well it's four years so the four years must up somehow somewhere i am sticking to it and i never dealt with that trauma i never thought about it i every time it comes into my mind i just go study every time it comes into my mind i study and it was just like that when schooling was done i realized that that it was not dealt with and i have to find time to deal with it to fix it so what i'm saying to you some of us go like karen who go into the program to forget the trauma she is going through it can it it we have to deal with it it might take a longer time when we forget it out of our mind because we're doing something else to distract us but we must deal with it we must deal with our trauma we are going to take a break and when we come back we will continue with the current saga current dilemma let's take a break
Welcome back, everyone. I am Charmaine Brown, and I am blessed to be here with you. All those persons who normally join me, welcome back. Newcomers, we welcome you with an open arm. I can do it any time in the show. I didn't remember to do it at the beginning of the show. I can do it any time in the show. You need what, what I am charging you about now, though, is there are people in our communities in our homes, our friends and family members that do not know that this show is available. You need to share this, this show. You need to share this event, these programs, share them with other people because as I said, everybody knows somebody, <coughs> excuse me, share that persons who are going through a hard time can see this program, appreciate this program, recognize that there are programs in place, that there are resources in place to help them, and just share, like, and just send it all over. We're on Facebook, we're on Instagram, we're on Twitter, we are on YouTube, and the uh, Mental Health Horizon. Yeah, I think that's our Facebook thing www.mentalhealthhorizon.com or send us an email at info at mentalhealthhorizon.com there's a group of people here i am there i am licensed and certified and i am qualified to help you do not be afraid i am jamaican i am canadian i am almost american i am here to help you i know the different culture and how we think about seeking the help we need especially people some people from jamaica i'm not bashing anyone they they have a strong mentality they have a strongness about themselves and to go seek mental health help sometimes they might not do it i am encouraging you that if you need it you know what seeking help for your mental health distortion, whatever it is, it doesn't have, you don't have to have a mental health diagnosis to seek help. Once you're not functioning, functioning the way you used to for quite a while where it is affecting your, your lifestyle, it's affecting your work and your relationship, you need to seek help. Once you can't do it by yourself, you need to seek professional help when you if you come to me and i can't help you because i assess you and we do in-depth assessment here at mental health horizon we do in-depth assessment head to toe from a nurse's point of view and if you need further help if we'll hear anything and you need further help we refer you so don't think that we're just gonna sit down and you are going to have a heart problem or we hear something that we are not supposed to hear and we're going to let you stay there without getting the help no we don't do that i am monitoring our comment section and i am monitoring the phone and i am also focusing over that side where the producer is so my eyes are all over the place we are going to continue with the current the current situation current saga so karen overstayed her visit in the united states of america without status this become an immigration issue listen to me i i some of you might be turning up your nose depends where you're from there's a lot of people that run away in other people country there were there were persons who were in my country from other other country like asia the asians and cubans and 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 there are people who leave Caribbean country, go to the States and Canada, um, the British countries or the European countries. There are many people who run away in other people's country. So don't turn up your nose when somebody don't have papers. If you know how to help them, help them get the help they need and stop criticize and stop judge. So Karen was without papers in the United States because she overstayed her visit. She decided that she would never return home until she gains an education in a first world country and was stable 
financially. That was her dream. Are you going to kill somebody's dream because they run away in somebody else's country? Are we going to kill somebody else's dream? Are we going to talk them and whisper about them and gossip about them and all these things? So here they are in somebody else's country. They have no papers. They are actually having stress over this. Because when you're in somebody else's country without paper, you cannot work. You cannot, you don't have the free movement that you normally would have without some immigration people coming down on you. You have that fear that some immigration people is going to come on you and capture you and deport you back to your country. There's that constant fear in the back of your head. Okay? Plus, plus who, who they live with. Is this person trustworthy who that who are they who they are staying with? They have that as well. Where are they going to eat? Where are they going to get job? They have all that problem. And then you coming into these people's life, just passing them and knowing them and chatting them and criticizing them and passing judgment. You are adding to the problem, people. My mother tell me if I am not fixing the problem, keep my mouth shut and move along. And she didn't say it that nice either. If you are not, she didn't even say it that nice. If you have nothing good to say, say nothing. Keep your mouth zip. If you cannot help someone, don't say anything. If you know somebody who can help, ask the person, can I give you a number? Can I do this? Can I do that? Get your permission. But don't, don't tamper. When, when somebody's not feeling well, don't add to their, you know, people always said it was the last straw that break the camel back. Don't add to their distress. Don't add to their, their don't add to their problems. Don't add. Fix it. Help. I have so many pet peeves, people. I am not, I want you to know that I am not perfect. I am far from perfection. And I don't want to be perfect. Because then if I am perfect, I have to do everything. And that's a mental illness. Perfection is a mental illness. Because once you miss something that you were normally to do, it stress you out. I am not perfect, but there are values and integrity and characteristics and my personality that forms and build me. And there are some things that I don't like. And you will hear it because you realize my voice is getting up. Because of that passion, <laughs> I am a passionate Jamaican. <laughs> I am a passionate Jamaican. So she had no papers, but she decided that she's not going home until she get the education in a first world country and is financially stable before she can go home. And who can blame her? You don't know what she's going through. This is just the beginning. She had no at 16 what it would take to survive in a first world country without proper support, documentation, and citizenship. At 16, Karen had no idea what she was, she was going to go through, nothing. She's 16, she's a teenager, she don't know. She left New York at the end of the academic, the academic scholarship or championship. She took a book, she took a bus, without the group knowing and went and went to stay with an aunt her mother's sister vernica in trenton new jersey karen took a bus and was leaving manhattan and going into new jersey trenton to be with vernica her mother's sister we are taking another break when we come back, we do some chit chat and we will see. <laughs>
Welcome back, everyone. I am Charmaine Brown, and I'm blessed to be here with you as your host on Impact Gospel Radio, uh, Mental Health, a Holistic Impact, where we provide tools and strategies, coping skills to help us when we're not doing that great, when we're not our, at our best. Because whatever affects our physical and our emotional and our spiritual self, let us not forget that part of us. We're a spiritual being. Whatever affect the other section of our life, the other areas of our life, does cause mental health stress as well and, and, and mental ache. And when we fix our mental health and put it and, and allow it to be in balance, then our whole life, our whole a holistic healing that we are looking. And as I was telling the producer that I'm going to just chit chat with you for the next, what, four minutes that I have here, is that we can achieve happiness, but we cannot achieve happiness when we don't know how to get that happiness. When we're not doing well and when we have a mental health issue where we're hurting ourselves, we're hurting others, we don't know what we're about we just know that we're feeling pain we don't know where that pain is coming from and i can relate to that clearly because when i was younger i was in so much pain where it, it seems like i was going to go crazy i was going to go mad because as a jamaican there are only certain certain um analgesic pain medication let me not use analgesic let me just use simple simple things like the, the pain medication that was available were panadol fenzic caffeinol um and aspirin i believe those were only the pain medication that i knew at that time and they were not strong enough for me and i wasn't taking them properly because when you take them and two hours after that pain would come back on me i would have to take again i couldn't wait until the four to six hours before i take more i have to take it because i was sickly i had underlining illness and i had sores and those sores were painful sores they were painful ulcers and so it was hard it was hard having my mental a balance it was hard maintaining a balance because when when you're in pain whatever causes the pain it doesn't have to be physical it can be can be from anything that is causing us that pain that psych ache not allowing us to relax not allowing us to we need to find a way to deal with it find somebody to help us find that supportive system to be there as a sense of support find those professionals that can help if it's physical if it's from a physical point of view get the doctor get the specialist involved get these these professionals involved especially when you're in a first world country and the system is open up for you for instance in canada where you have your health care is covered and 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 you have the, the, the prof professionals that are about, around to help you get the help you need if you're wherever you are even if you're in jamaica wherever you are get that help to help take that ache away whatever is causing that ache because once you once you release up the ache and talk through the ache and talk through the pain and you get help they, they refer you and tell you who can help in this area who can help in that area and you you finish up that ache, get rid of the ache. Then you are able to enjoy your life. You are in, you are able to be happy. You cannot, you cannot experience happiness until all that is causing problem and shame is removed. I love you, wonderful people. Join me again every Monday at six thirty. A central daytime, 7.30 Eastern daytime and Impact Gospel Radio. This is mental health, a holistic impact. And I am Charmaine Brown, a licensed, certified psychotherapy here with you. Have a great evening. Bye. 
Impact Gospel Radio and Mental Health Horizon. All information posted or aired is merely for educational purposes and is not a substitute for seeking further professional advice. While the information aired has been verified to the best of our abilities, we cannot guarantee there are no mistakes or errors. We reserve the right to change this policy at any time. If you want to stay up to date with the latest mental health information, please visit our website at www.mentalhealthhorizon.com, book an appointment at info at mentalhealthhorizon.com, or tune into the broadcast every Monday evening at 6.30 p.m. Central Daylight Time.